What's going on guys? Um, in this next video, we're going to break down the differences between low flow, utilizing low flow and high flow, um, when to use either or. If we're going to use low flow, we're gonna utilize this device called the nasal cannula. Um, and then this next package that she's opening is called a non-rebreather mask. Um, if you haven't seen how to crack open an O2 tank, um, go watch that video. It's up in the right side right there with Maddie. Um, and so to break down the nasal cannula, go ahead and unra uh, unravel the nasal cannula. And we see the, the, the nasal prongs right here. Um, kind of hold, like give it a side profile um, facing down so the hooks are facing down. And so um, you see that there's like a directionality um, to these nasal nasal prongs right here. Um, we want the down, the, the prongs to be facing down into the patient's nose. So it shouldn't be facing, it shouldn't be facing up, okay? Um, and when you're about to apply this, we want this already hooked up to oxygen before you hook it onto the patient's face. And so go ahead and apply this. The um, range for the flow rate is gonna range between two to six liters per minute of oxygen. So go ahead and um, crank it to about two liters a minute. Do I hear you? Is it cracked open? Yeah. Yes, oh, sir. It is. it is. Oh, okay. Really Here we quiet. go. It's just really quiet. Um, and Kimberly's going to ensure that it's facing down. And you're going to start with the prongs. So hold it um, on both sides. And then you're going to put the, no the prongs first. Go up the nose first. All right. Up the nose. Ooh, that's, mm, <laughs> that is refreshing. And then she's gonna hook it over the ears. And then after it's on top of the ears, she's gonna cinch it up from the bottom to secure it. And just gotta <laughs> love that, love that oxygen. Um, man, I can't believe I've never visited an oxygen bar. Um, <laughs> I once responded to a patient complaining of a nosebleed and we showed up and he had this nasal cannula on with 10 liters per minute of oxygen on. Um, and it was just drying out his nostrils. And so I'm gonna, take that off actually and uh yeah so the the main difference guys between this and the next device so go ahead and turn it off and, and apply the non breather the main difference is going to be necessity um, does your patient currently need oxygen and if they need oxygen they're going to utilize this next device called the non breather mask and with the non breather mask it comes brand new package like this you can unravel um, the reservoir bag and hook up um, the tubing and the range for the flow rate for this tubing is going to be 12 to 15 liters per minute but honestly guys if you plan to use this device just use straight up 15 um, and notice how there's so go ahead and crank it to 15 um, Kimberly right you hear it I hear it on and then Kimberly's gonna plug this hole um, right here and then that was simply to get the, the bag, the reservoir bag, to fill up with oxygen. So how this device works is when you apply this mask onto the patient, the patient is breathing in 100% oxygen from this reservoir bag, and when they exhale, their CO2, their carbon, carbon dioxide, is leaving through these one-way valves. Um, and so go ahead and apply this onto, onto the face. So yeah, take the strap and then just go around. Perfect, perfect. That's good. And then go... Over, over my head, yeah. on the top. Perfect. Good. Yeah. And then just coach the patient. You coach the patient just deep, slowly and deeply. I'm going to turn it, turn it off. Um, but like I said, so the main difference is going to be um, a question of necessity. Let's say your patient had maybe, a, we want a minimum pulse ox of 94%, and maybe they had a pulse ox of 91, 92%, but everything else is good. Their skin is normal. They're not complaining of shortness of breath. Um, lung sounds are clear bilaterally. So they don't necessarily need the oxygen, but they could benefit from it. Um, the other scenario I can think of is if they did have a complaint of shortness of breath, but their pulse ox is 95, 96%, skin parameters are normal, lung sounds are clear bilaterally, no accessory muscle use, they're not hunched over in tripod position, so and they, they can complete full sentences, right? So everything about that tells you that that patient doesn't need um, supplemental oxygen, but because they still have a slight complaint of shortness of breath, we can start them off on a nasal cannula and see if that um, helps them feel better. Um, if you have any questions between those two, it's a, it's a very common, would you say it's a common, um, kind of like tough, 
difficult topic that students, yeah. yeah so people tend to focus in on the SPO two yeah. number rather than what the patient looks like, what the patient is telling you. Right, right, right. So um, a, a phrase that we picked up that I picked up in paramedic school was uh, treat the patient, not the monitor. Um, and so don't zero in, don't get tunnel vision on the pulse ox, um, but rather treat the patient holistically as a whole. So look at their position, look at their lung sounds, look at their um, ability to complete full sentences, everything, okay? Not just the pulse ox. I hope that helps. See you in the next video.